I have belief that they will respond in the right way, uh, that we have a bunch of men in that locker room who care for each other and want to win. You know, we find out what type of team we are. We have this type of adversity, especially to start the year. I'm going to make sure I come into the building tomorrow with a lot of energy, a lot of juice, a lot of positive energy, because at the end of the day, that's all we can do. Come in, watch the film, uh, get coached, um, you know, be critical of yourself, um, be locked in this week each and every day. Um, the you know, leaders got to hold, you know, everybody accountable, and we we got to be leaders. But I think you just, you know, come in with a growth mindset, want to be better. From what I've seen so far, we have the right kind of guys in the locker room, and uh, I think believe we will make it happen. We're gonna find out what type of culture we have, what type of guys we have in this locker room, and I know we have the right guys in the locker room. We'll find a way to make the corrections, come to practice this week, prepare, and uh, go out to Seattle and, and win one game. You know, that's, that's the mission at hand right now. We're not going to sit here and mope around, keep our heads down. We're going to keep battling, keep fighting, uh, and get ready for Seattle. Welcome to St. Thomas Sports Park and the bubble and this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show for 2021. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. And this place right here during COVID, it was really everything for this, for this team, wasn't it? Meetings, weight room, locker room cafeteria, whatever we needed. Yeah, you did everything in here, undoubtedly. The Titans coming off a defeat, obviously, at the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. Not happy with what happened in that performance. Monday and Tuesday, not about the next opponent, but really about the Titans, right? We're never happy when we lose, and we're disappointed. And uh, the one thing that we do know is that we have to get back to work, and we have to improve, and we have to figure out you know, how we can respond and how we can get into games and start to complement each other. Uh, much sooner than, than when we did. And uh, there were glimpses of it, but, but far too uh, few and far too often uh, in between. Just the, the type of play where we can affect their quarterback and be efficient throwing the ball and run the football and turn the football over. Uh, doing a nice job, you know, trying to create field position. They had a much better field position than we did. All those things that we believe are critical in winning football games that we just didn't do. Obviously, one of the things most critical when you want to play complementary football is you need to win the turnover ratio. The Titans did not do that on Sunday against the Cardinals. So as you kind of get back to work, taking care of the football, probably a point of emphasis. Well, it is every day. You know, we do every day we go out there and practice. It's something that we focus on and uh, we'll have to continue to, to work on it. But, but you know, you, you can't get yourself into a situation where you have to drop back and throw the ball as many times as we did. You know, there's there's Chandler Jones. Obviously, those things you're not going to be able to, to to do anything about. You know, the quarterback may may have to just go down on the ground. But you know, he read that play perfectly. And you know, again, the receivers and everybody, it's all about the line. And you know, if we throw it across the middle, we got to make sure that we catch it. You know, when we volleyball it up in the air, uh, that that nothing good is going to come of it like like we see here. But uh, I'm confident. You know, and it, and again, it's got to go back to our our defense has to be able to create some turnovers as well. And um, you know, everybody is, is in charge of ball security. The offensive line taking care of the pocket, you know, the runners that when they have the football, they're, they're taking care of it. Uh, and the quarterback, you know, making great decisions. Speaking of runners, Titans have to run the football too. It's, it's a bread and butter part of who you are. Well, I think it's part of our fabric. It's what we believe in. It's, it's who we have. I think we have a, the offensive group to be able to run it. You know, you see Derek and, and what we're capable of doing. Um, you know, again, it just we, we had too many negative plays to start drives, got us behind on the chains. And, you know, there were positive plays, uh, but just not enough of them. And so we have to string them together so that these plays can start to complement each other. 
the run game and, and a play action game can marry uh, with each other uh, and we can start to to see the returns uh, of what our offense uh, will be and should be and has to be. And as we always say in these situations, you have to make plays. You did make some plays in the game, and we're going to take a look at a few of them, starting with a fake punt that tried to get the Titans going early in the ball game. Yeah, just looked for a little momentum there. Uh, Matthias and, and Imani hooked up there, both of those guys in that safety room. Uh, you know, we, I thought it was well practiced. It looked good all week. and. You know, came through there and tried to just give us a spark and a little bit of momentum. Uh, but, you know, and then we got into the drive. This is a drive where we started making some, some first downs. And, you know, I thought that was a well-timed call there and uh, well executed there by everybody involved to, to get the flea flicker uh, to get us a shot. So the return to center for Chester Rogers for 39 yards to the 11-yard line. Third and goal at the one, Tannehill calls his own number. Yeah, you know, it kind of came off script, and they, they ran outside, and you saw that the, it wasn't there to the flat. And so, you know, Ryan, to his credit, you know, turned it up, and, and that's what it's going to be. It's Sometimes these plays on, on all three phases, they're not going to be perfect. You know, guys are going to have to go out there, have the confidence, and know what to do, and be able to improvise. And, you know, that that's what this game comes down to. You know, you can see us here now with, you know, forcing the quarterback, get a lot of guys in the drop. Kevin makes an interception. It's a great overall defensive play. You know, we got to try to get down to near numbers, but you know, we'll figure that out next time. And, and it felt for the now we go in and score, and it felt complimentary for the first time. But unfortunately, it's 40 plays into the football game. Speaking of going in to score, here's the touchdown to AJ Brown. Yeah, you know what I mean? You get a pocket, they pressure, but there's a pocket there that the quarterback can step up, you know, and he looks off the safety and uh, th this is those are the things that we're used to, you know, glimpses um, going up, attacking a football, putting it out there where AJ can go and get it. Uh, but it just has to be more consistent and, and sooner. And here comes Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, you know, it's, it's another third down there where, you know, it's it's well executed. The forces him up into the pocket. You know, Jeff's looping around and we have good tight coverage. So you know, that it's uh, all works together. Everybody <clears throat> compliments each other. The key for the Titans, they need more of that against Seattle this Sunday. We'll talk about the Seattle Seahawks and the keys to victory coming up next as the Mike Vrabel Show continues. This Sunday, the Tennessee Titans travel to Seattle Lumen Field to take on the Seattle Seahawks. 325 kickoff. We're on the air on Titans Radio at 230 with Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells and Titans Countdown. Seattle 1-0, impressive victory at Indianapolis. Yeah, they went on the road and they were incredibly efficient on offense. They didn't have that many snaps. Uh, they didn't possess it that long, but when they had it, they scored touchdowns. They hit big plays. They scored uh, right before the end of the half on a, on a, on a deep shot to lock it. Uh, the defense played excellent. They played fast um, and really had control for uh, most of that game. Let's talk about Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys to victory, winning at Seattle. It is certainly an environment that gets your attention because of the noise. Well, that and, they, and what the record's been. I mean, when you when you want to beat Seattle at home, you have to go out there and you have to have clean operation and poise, and you have to you have to execute. You have to execute early, um, or the, or they're just the, the hornet's nest is going to start stirring. So, you know, we, we have to be able to practice that and come out here and be ready to go uh, when we get there early in the game on Sunday. All right. Key number two is about winning the turnover battle something that the Titans value always. We talked about it in the first segment. Well, we, we always will. We know how important it is, and we have to do a better job not only taking care of it, but we have to do a better job defensively and on special teams to trying to create those opportunities, you know, punching it out, tipping balls at the line of scrimmage, uh, trying to find ways to, to get it off them and, and not just uh, allow them to, to move the ball down the field without turnover. So that's going to be something that will be critical here this week. Nissan key number three is affect the quarterback. How do you affect Russell Wilson? Well, you have to get guys into the pocket. You have to be able, you know, he he's a, an elite passer. You know, he can, he can throw on the run. He can throw off platform and make all different kinds of throws. He's a, such an excellent deep ball thrower. Um, 
you know, that we'll have to try to find ways to, to go and attack him and, and still be sound and, and make sure that, that we're good with our rush lanes and, and not allowing him to, to get out on the edge and, and, and have options. Those are the Nissan keys to victory at Seattle. Again, it's a 325 kick on Sunday. We've got more coming up with the head coach. The Mike Rabel Show continues. We all know the story about what happened in Waverly on August the 21st. 17 inches of rain fell in Humphreys County in just hours. Devastating flooding, 20 lives lost, over 500 houses damaged, many of them not able to be repaired, businesses, schools, roads washed away, millions of dollars worth of damage. Just catastrophic, that's the only way to put it. For the Waverly High School football team, they suffered losses themselves. All of their gear, their practice field, their locker rooms, their game field, everything gone. Well, the Tennessee Titans have stepped in to help both Humphreys County and Waverly and the Waverly High School football team. A $50,000 donation was made from the Titans Foundation to help that effort in terms of cleanup and repair. Two different teams of Titans employees went to Humphreys County to assist and thousands of dollars worth of new gear was provided by the Titans and partners through the NFL so that the Waverly High School football team could go on with their season. And this Thursday, they go on with their season as the home team at Nissan Stadium. That's right. As the guests of the Tennessee Titans, the Waverly Tigers will play host to the White House Blue Devils in a Region 6 3A battle, which is for first place. And we will actually broadcast it on 104.5 The Zone as Titans Radio becomes Tigers Radio. But the big key in all of this is that we're going to raise money for Humphreys County and Waverly. Go to TennesseeTitans.com slash donate to Waverly and give money to the United Way of Humphreys County. Give whatever you can. Because, Coach, when you get down to it, this cleanup, this rebuild, everything Humphreys County and Waverly is going through right now, it's going to take a lot of money for a long time. Hopefully people will see this football game as drawing everybody to this community, whoever wins or loses, and will make an effort to give them money. And I think it puts everything into perspective. You know, we lost a football game on Sunday. You know, they, they've lost friends and family members. They've lost homes. and. You know, I know that this community will rally behind them, and uh, I think it's going to be amazing to watch those kids go out there on Thursday night and play, and uh, I bet it's going to be a heck of a football game. Again, we'll be on the air at 6 o'clock with Tigers Countdown, Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells, as we'll have that great football game. And remember, go to TennesseeTitans.com slash donate to Waverly and give what you can to help the fine people of Humphreys County. Now we turn to a favorite part of our show. It's really Coach Vrabel's favorite part. It is our Delta mm. Dental Guess the Titan feature. As we go to break, let's have our first look at the person that Coach Vrabel will try to guess. Oh, that nice smile from Delta Dental. Oh, so we've That's changed. That's a good place to start. Now we've changed, huh? Now we're just going to do uh, It looks like it's a little different. More coming up after this. I was the changes in the office. Delta Dental, can you guess this tight? Man, that is a nice smile. The people at Delta Dental have to be so pleased. And you, you have a look at it. He's got an extra look at it here. Mike Vrabel, can you guess this tight? I, I think I can. This is a this is a valued de Delta Dental uh, customer. Yes. Yes, I can tell that. And it is Kevin Byard. Wow. Kevin Byard, he says, and then he gives it to David Letterman Flip. Is he correct? Christian Fulton. You were in the secondary. 0 for 1. 0 for 1. It kind of fits Brad, though, because our new feature that we're very excited about, actually, is called the Titans Files. And the Titans Files for this edition of the program 
is actually about none other than Caleb Farley. Here's our Amy Wells with more. Made in North Carolina, population 3,500, has been branded as the biggest little football town in the world. The Made in Blue Devils have been a North Carolina 2A power for years. Caleb Farley was their quarterback, not because he was a pure passer, but because he was the fastest guy in the Tar Heel State. Recruiters came calling for Farley and the speedster picked Virginia Tech. Now, Caleb Farley was not going to be a quarterback in college. Hokie head coach Justin Fuente saw him as either a defensive back or a wide receiver. With plenty of DBs on hand for 2017, Farley initially landed at wideout. Unfortunately, that lasted only 11 periods into the first practice of fall camp. Farley tore an ACL and was done for the season. A double whammy came just five months later. He lost his mother, Robin, when breast cancer returned for a second time. Farley showed strength and resolve fighting through these struggles, and it impressed Justin Fuente. In the spring of 2018, he knew that Farley could handle a football challenge. So Fuente called him into his office for a talk, a talk about moving to defense. I remember sitting here right at this desk I'm at right now and talking to him about it again. And he said, Coach, he said, I, I trust you. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do the best I can at DB. He goes, you know I've never tackled anybody before, right? Like, this is a quarterback. Like, this isn't even a, a guy that played both ways. This is the quarterback. So he's like, you know, I've never tackled anybody. So there was a learning curve there, you know, for him. And I think one of the things that's going to help him as he moves forward is he has struggled before. It's so often highlighted that Caleb Farley intercepted two passes in his first college game against Florida State, but 2018 overall was an up and down year for him on defense. The flashes, however, were there. And with a year under his belt, Farley exploded in 2019 as one of the top cornerbacks in the country. His biggest gift? That speed that we mentioned earlier. Every new star that showed up at Blacksburg challenged him to a race, and everyone was summarily dismissed, having their doors blown off. He's got elite speed, and I know the NFL is a fast game, and I know there's a lot of guys that can run in the NFL, but he's got elite speed, and we'll have elite speed at the next level. Let me take you back to the start of our story. Remember when we mentioned that Caleb Farley was a quarterback at Maiden High School? Justin Fuente believes that experience has installed in Farley some attributes that don't come with every defensive back. I think playing that position helps you the rest of your life, you know, from public speaking to leadership to handling adversity to receiving criticism. You know, the quarterback, you know, gets way too much uh, credit when things go well and too much blame when things don't go well. I, I think all of that is good for us. Good for the Tennessee Titans as well. Caleb Farley hasn't had it easy, and while a great athlete, he's not a finished product. And he knows it. His willingness to learn, to trust, and to believe, along with that world-class speed, give him a chance to be a special player for years to come. He is an impressive athlete, Caleb Farley, and it feels like he's really making progress all the time. I, I, the one thing I can tell you is I think he's gotten better uh, since he's gotten here and he's been able to work and get healthier and continue to, to, to get that strength back that's required to play professional football. You know, he was down for so long and we knew that. And we knew that there was gonna you know, be some time that we'd have to have some patience. And you know, he's working, he's getting a lot of great reps and, and hopefully we can continue to start working him in here to the, to the games. And, you know, some of this work and practice can start to pay off. You said it just right, work. That's what we're going to talk about when we come back on this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. Putting in the work and a video that will get you for ready for the rest of the week and for Sunday's game at Seattle. Stay tuned for more. We are lucky that there are a lot of very talented Titans fans, and one of those is filmmaker Jeff Venable. Jeff partnered with the Titans staff to put together a brand video that was memorable last year. Tennessee Tough, remember that? Well, this year's maybe even better. It's all about what the Titans are doing right now, and that is putting in the work. 
What's good, Tennessee? It's hard to say we're clocking in because we never stop. Let's go to work. Keep up the work, Tennessee. We will too. Tighten up. We're headed to the Great Northwest on Sunday. Titans and Seahawks at 325. You can hear it on Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone in Nashville, beginning with Titans Countdown at 2.30. For head coach Mike Vrabel and our fine staff, I'm Mike Keith, and we'll see you next time on The Mike Vrabel Show. Tighten up.